yesterday we started, sorry, with the first one, today we, the, we start with the second one, and then we skip the third, uh, and then we continue the fourth. Uh.
You were skipping three? Yes, because normally you have seen, confirm, please, uh, edit distance with Mahmoud. Yes. yes. Basically. All this kind of. And then for four, for four we, I just need to show you something on slide. For resolving is, uh, are we ready for solution two? Maybe someone can discuss his or her uh, solution, so we can discuss alternative uh, viewpoints on the on the topic. Some volunteers or some or two random numbers. Uh, I can start. Um, so for the first one, we were looking at uh, bitmap join index on the country attribute. Um, yeah, so I said um, having this type of a bitmap would allow us to see uh, quickly be able to query uh, depending on what country that we're looking at in terms of the fact table. 
Um, so from a business perspective, uh, you can start looking at um, what uh, maybe differences in unit prices between countries, differences in uh, the impact of discounts on units sold, uh, but essentially allows you to do um, comparisons country to, easier comparisons country to country uh, for, for the company. And do, do you know, have you ever heard about the um, Big Mac Index? Never heard about the, the, the Big Mac Index, uh, which is uh, an economical... Uh, at, at the beginning it was kind of a joke, but now it's a very well-known in the economic indicator. Of the well-being. Sorry? Of the development. Of the development of the country, the idea. What uh, do you know, Nasbul, about this? I have heard it. It's related to the McDonald's. And it is the basic. Uh, basic. Uh, it is the price of the Big Mac, or the basic uh, Big Mac that is available in all the countries. Why? I mean, how do my uh, big? Uh, how do McDonald's compute the Mac? Uh, the Big Mac index. No, sorry. How do big uh, McDonald's compute the price of a Big Mac from a business perspective? How how does does it cost in Spain a Big Mac with respect? I don't know. You maybe you have you ever went to Big Mac in <laughs> to take a Big Mac in Spain uh, or compare it with a Big Mac here? So what what is the basic the basic perspective of Big Mac in uh, yes? This is the purchase power of each country. So, for example, if you're okay to, to spend 15 euros for, for a lunch, in some countries the limit is 3 euros because you have to distribute your money depending on how much you spend. So, of course, like they will try to profit depending on, like, it won't be everywhere a 2 euro in every, every single country, but it will, it will have different variations. Of course, them to profit. Of, of course, they want to maximize profit and they, they, they need to put the Big Mac uh, at the highest price that is still making people to go there to, to lunch. But uh, basically with that uh, indicator they used, uh, I mean, uh, 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 serious economists uh, do this kind of uh, um, leveraging criteria to analyze various factors, economic factors in the country. So yes, I mean, it's just a, 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 a side comment, but you, you know that this is very important to compute difference across countries because these are difficult to, to catch. Uh, I don't know, the, the price, all the prices, people complain, I'm not aware, or I'm not uh, very aware of that, but people, people complain that Brussels is very expensive, even, even with respect to Berlin, uh, Another, another, another uh, capitals in Europe. So I'm, I'm used to living here, so I don't, I don't catch this, this difference. So this is the kind of thing that it's important to understand that this is a, a very complex problem in data warehousing. <coughs> when you have a multinational company, I mentioned I have a former researcher that was uh, setting the, the, the data warehouse for a big pharma company, collecting all data, you know, all clinical data of all possible drugs in commercialized in, in Europe uh, and uh, outside Europe. And you, you need to somehow convert these figures into a data warehouse and make uh, some decisions uh, about that. But given that the uh, economic uh, figures of each country varies very much, and how do, do analysis take account the vari variation of the of the economic parameters so to adapt the same analysis to different uh, measures. So this is a complex issue. So indeed, uh, going back to, our, your, to your answer, uh, Adam, yes, this is very important to do that. So my, my, my question was how often we need to do that. If you have a multinational company, this is the essential thing to do. Uh, so yes, this um, going back again to your question yesterday, we need to leverage how many indexes we put in which in which tables? So we need to favor. Is this a very important question we need to ask to other index on that table? And then 
This is why I, I, I told you about all these Mac, Big Mac indexes, because yes, this is a really uh, useful business uh, analytic that is needed in multinational companies. So that would push us to put that index on that attribute. Right, so you need to you, you don't need to when you're defining indexes you need to really look at the business perspective as I continuously do uh, repeat in my lectures here and the other lectures so yes we need to do uh, technical work but the final decision is not driven by the technical or computer science criteria the, the the basic uh, decision should be pushed by the, by the business. Otherwise, you do theoretical computer science and then you, you, you get rid of that. But here in data management and data science, you are not doing theoretical computer science the, devoid of uh, purpose. So if you are doing data science, you are helping managers. And then so you need to think as a manager, understand the manager, the manager perspective, understand the man, speak their manager language and translate then you need to be able to translate your uh, their manager language into your technical indexes and all the things that we are learning here so i'm continuously pushing to think manager even if i'm not a manager by no means but at least i understand their language i i'm trying to uh, translate their their language into concrete uh, data warehouse or database specification this is the this is the point so yes, please continue, um, Adam. Sure. Um, so then for the next one, we're looking at a bitmap index on the gender in the client table. Um, so I said that this could be used to quickly see uh, differences in spending habits for men versus women. So you can see, for example, uh, which quantities are purchased, uh, or you can look at um, which prices are preferred by each uh, gender. Um, or you can also see the impact of discounts. Perhaps a discount makes more men purchase things than women. Um, so. so yes, again, thank you for insisting on that. Yes, you put immediately the, the, this index into a business per perspective. And support, uh, so basically you, we are analyzing gender variations. If we think, and you, exp uh, uh, I'm not uh, having any, I don't know that gender is a very, sensitive matter uh, nowadays, but I'm just trying to do, to state facts. Uh, men and women are different. Uh, I'm not saying who is better than, than, than who, but are different and have different purchase habits, for example. But uh, here we are talking about purchase. Other uh, interesting features that we need to analyze with respect to women in other, in other domains in other real world domain, which is not uh, this uh, silly fact, uh, client product and store data warehouse. If it, if it would be possible, I would add a, a attribute of, uh, if the client is married or not, if they have a family or not, it can be uh, like. Yes, indeed. Uh, typically you mentioned a very nice, a very nice thing. Uh, so again, I'm pushing the business perspective. You are thinking in the right way to say, currently my data warehouse is like this, but uh, you need to think the, 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 the manager will not spend more than five minutes looking at the dashboard and then he, he, he has to switch to another. So you are building the dashboard and then you need to think ahead what could you propose to him to help him, or him, him or her? So in your in your 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 way of thinking is perfect. And say yes, I have this manager, this uh, gender information, but maybe by with having additional salary range or family or children will social help. Social status? Is it correct to say social status? Social status or something like this. Or, Gender by itself in the man in the sailing domain is not enough. Yeah. So we need to do compete with something else. And if what is the problem? For example, uh, can I leverage your Nazgul your comment? So we you identify that we have one we are collecting one particular characteristic of one element of your data warehouse, but we need to collect other that will help. What is the technical and organizational consequences of that? 
So you are asking to have uh, one or two parameters uh, for char better characterizing your clients. Can you please elaborate, or all of us, elaborate a little bit more on what are the technical and organizational implications of, of, uh, of having this, this uh, additional parameter? But for every for every new parameter that you add, you are multiplying your client table by that size. But uh, by that parameter's cardinality. Again, you are uh, one step ahead. What I'm thinking. I uh, let's start from the business perspective. Maybe I can. Uh, yes, he asked first. Uh, I would say like first of all, you need to find where the data is. So most likely, uh, I mean, you can basically assume. You don't have it already in the data warehouse. You most likely need to check another data source, and you have to find a way to sync this information with this. So you need to think uh, about all of that with time. So then you now that you mentioned this aspect, we are thinking there if we have if we are lucky that this is collected somewhere. I need to identify where this is collected and then modify all the ETL. You know how the how, how difficulties you are doing struggling for the TPCDI? Then you need to complexify your ETL processes to, in addition, take into account this additional attribute. Suppose that you are not lucky and then this uh, uh, family information of uh, salary range is not collected anywhere. Then what happens? But you are you are uh, killing yourself. You have a very nice uh, proposal to the manager, and you say, "No, it's difficult. No, no, we abandon." No, Basically, no. you are you are losing your nice ideas. Please, uh, maybe him. You you were asking. Uh, you were. Uh, I was just pointing out the issue with like when we get into more details, like family and your marital status, like people will be concerned about privacy issues. For example. So, then how do you manage? I mean, for you it's it's important. I don't I don't want that you do uh, Facebook kind of things. Uh, please be ethical. But can you ethically think of a way to acquiring this information? Yes, Andresa. In this case, maybe what you don't need uh, because you're like perfect would get in the way. Let's say you probably don't need. Maybe you can find some sort of public data source from the government or something that says, okay, you have these, I don't know, uh, salary ranges or status for people in this country. Then you maybe have something to join with that. It doesn't need to be perfect because in the data warehouse, what you will have is most likely aggregate. That's a good point, but nevertheless, suppose that you are willing to propose to nevertheless ask the, the person, the client, the new client, to, for, uh, for, to, to give this information. You can offer a discount if they provide their full performance. That could be an easy, but um, again, I'm probably I'm thinking of an easier way to catch this information, and uh, this is a typical way that happened in data warehousing. So, yeah. Okay. So, so there are many shops that let you create a client card where you where you have to feed in all your information. That's a typical way and a, a, a traditional trick. You you want to be uh, have this code for uh, a fidelity card? Then give me a little bit more information, and people will be motivated. Or for example, at ULB happened many times. So what? Uh, Sometimes we didn't have enough information for this or this parameter on the on the students, and then the rector asked asked more information about another another slicing parameter to the, uh, analyze the I don't know the success rate of students with respect to many parameters. Uh, typically, then you need to first go into the web page, uh, JavaScript uh, pages to add this, this, this field, 
fill this information and depending on whether you privacy issue or not, maybe you put it uh, ac ac uh, mandatory or not, or pro pro induce without doing unethical things, induce students and actually communicate uh, your address. I, I tell you the traditional example, if you are uh, in registering to the sport, you will want to give, give them the, their latest phone number to be able to have uh, the latest activity. So, so uh, in summary, you get that you have a very simple technical request. I would like to have salary range for clients. This is a very, uh, to better do my dashboard. You need to think all the way down to the how students are registering to, or how clients are registering to the, for the first time into the, into the, your system, and then involve the manager, not of your, you are working, suppose you are working on the data man, data warehouse uh, department, you need to convince all the managers until the first manager managing the, the client uh, re, my database to convince them that you will need that all the all the people in the in the line uh, will be help uh, will be used uh, this information will be useful for all of them and then modify all the process since the collect until the, the final data warehouse so my 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 summary in this in this uh, in this uh, long uh, discourse is try to operationalize things so when you think i need new more data in the data warehouse you need to go until the end until the beginning and we discuss alternative ways through open data through pushing the client's uh, card fidelity card through asking uh, when the uh, user introduces his new client into the company so all this you need to think and this is again managerial thinking trying to help you build a data warehouse that will be more, more efficient. But you need to go also to, to, to the other side. Sorry for this very, very, this very long uh, discourse, but I really want to think that non-technical issues are at the end much, much more important than the technical issues. But you need to master your technical issues and make uh, if you want to have a successful data warehouse project, you need to comp master all the technical issues, but uh, also have uh, social skills uh, in order to push your ideas all through all, all, the, through, all, the, all through the organization. Okay for that? Uh, yes, sorry to interrupt you. I promise I will not interrupt you anymore. Uh, no worries. Uh, then this so the last one was a bitmap on unit price in the fact table. Yeah. Um, so I said that uh, presumably, generally, I would say that that uh, price would have a very high cardinality. So this uh, may not be beneficial because you have so many different prices. You might have 3.49, 3.51, etc. However, um, there could be an edge case. I know like dollar stores or like discount stores might have $5 items, $7 items. So if your prices are more categorical rather than continuous, then this might be the uh, business situation where that might make sense to do. Because then you know which category of items is, is selling better or worse. And uh, what about indeed going a little bit uh, in, the, in your direction to making this attribute or a derived attribute a categorical? So you put the ranges. Yeah. into this attribute and saying, of course, if you are thinking of having uh, uh, prices from the 0, 10, 0, 20, 0, 10, 0 to 10 euros, so for 10 to 20, to 20 to 50, to 50 to 100, to 100 to 200, to, to 200 to 5, and uh, so all this can already help you to do something. Mm -hmm. Sir? Yes? But isn't there a disadvantage to create an index on a table with low selectivity? This is what uh, my It's better to, to create an index on the second example rather than on the third. Because like, if you have a high selectivity for unit prices, it would be better to find, like, if you have one unit price, it's better to find it through the, through the index rather than using a sequential scan. So I fully agree with you. So, uh, what my discussion is going next. Uh, somehow we need to have uh, some 
quick access to prices. To, but the prices by itself is not enough. I mean, it's too low, too high cardinality. Maybe we can reduce the cardinality, keeping the same idea of having a quick, a quick access to these indexes. Sorry, a quick access to this fact table by categorizing the doing a categorical ranges uh, for this uh, and then of course that solves that this this schema solves for any kind you mentioned for the dollar discount uh, but uh, doing the, your 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 ranges according to normal you know variation uh, zero to ten there will be a lot of variation twenty to ten to twenty you know more or less dividing in buckets that more or less have similar cardinality or similar characteristics. Yeah. So that would be an alternative since indeed, as you mentioned, Philippe, this third, uh, this third uh, solution is not ideal, but nevertheless, that answers a realistic, uh, try to answer a realistic business question and I'm trying to provide an alternative way to answer this business question. Yeah, I got a little confused. You said that it's, it's not, the, not a good option to make a, an index on a high selectivity. I, sorry, high cardinality. Uh, maybe I mix, mix the two terms. So when you have a lot of uh, prices, you a bitmap is not uh, war it's not worth but uh, you may remember in the when we discuss bitmaps that uh, by doing a price attribute into ranges that will already help uh, so to solve this high cardinality and reduce with low cardinality you will have i don't know 10 or 20 ranges Other cardinality you mean the distinct values in the table uh -huh. The word high cardinality and low selectivity are the exact same thing, right? No, selectivity is when you put a condition uh, where in the where clause, uh, to be very pragmatic, yeah. uh, where sex is uh, male. So in, in average, you will have half of the fact table or half of the client. So this is not this is low selectivity. Uh, living in Brussels uh, or living in Excel for a Belgian database. That will be a re relatively good selectivity because if you have a well-distributed client database all in Belgium, how much of them will live in Excel? Not many. So this is high selectivity because you are, uh, among all the clients, you are selecting a few of them. Okay, so high selectivity would be synonymous with saying being very selective and only selecting a few of the roles from the Uh-huh. Can we say that the con of the second point is that uh, uh, we wouldn't like to create bitmap on gender because of high selectivity? Uh, low, selectivity. Uh, low selectivity, indeed. Yeah. indeed. This can be a con. Uh, yes, in my in the answer, you say a bitmap index on gender will be only be useful in combination with other bitmaps in the same table because that will help us to, to mix. Uh, with uh, bit operators, the reduce the selectivity of uh, selecting less clients, for example. Like performing intersection and union. And yeah, yeah. And then what about the third? Uh, sorry, the B, the select uh, query. just based on the fact that it's, I mean, client.country. Uh, I haven't looked at the rest of it, but I would say uh, the first one. Yeah. Because the first one is a bit map on countries. So I'll be very, I'll be able to quickly select just my Belgiums and just my Netherlands. Uh-huh. That's at least the first one, go at it. And I guess I have gender, so the second one as well. Uh, group by gender. Yeah, because I can use the gender bitmap to group by, mm -hmm. and I can use the country bitmap to select. <laughs> yeah? Uh, Nicole, you were wanting to do so, uh, to say something? Yeah, it's the idea that Adam said that uh, if I were to choose one of them, it would be for the country because it filters more. more. Yeah, it's more selective. Yeah. Right? That's exactly what I was going to say the selectivity for country. 
like the database, I don't know the context of this, if it has like the country for all the world or something like that, but if it's something like that, then maybe Belgium is something like really tiny. So it should help like to filter, like if you have like this, these data sets, uh, then you can find like Belgium is like these very tiny data sets and just filter the fact table out of this. Perfect. I think I'm just thinking more like, I guess it depends too on what your data set is. If you're a, for example, a country that's, or sorry, a company that's based in Belgium and has just started expanding into other countries, then gender will probably be more selective. Indeed, indeed. Because 90% 90, 90 of your client will be of Belgium. Yeah. Uh, and then, Yes, you are right. It, it, it depends even for multinational countries. But now uh, let's go back one step again. Uh, you already finished your TPCDS. You remember how some of those queries uh, were uh, expensive. I will mean one of the as I rem as I re as you remember I told you this is an open project uh, so you can continue working six months on, on that uh, so by in in essence I the fact that whether you put or not indexes in your tables for the TPCDS will be not uh, it was not part of the basic requirement so if you find some problem with the one of these queries and you added a particular index that I would call that as a bonus point more more than uh, because it was not in the, in the basic requirement. So now for example if you want to study now that you understand a little bit more of these indexes an easy way to study this this chapter in a very pragmatic way you take your TPCDS and then look uh, the three or five uh, more expensive queries and then try to investigate how, which kind of indices you could add to this table or to that table to make that most, uh, if you add up all the times needed for one particular scale factor, you need to reduce, uh, I don't know, 10% for all the, uh, we are trying to, to uh, you know, about uh, without taking into account frequency of these queries, the first thing that you need to think about is, suppose that you add up all the time needed for the 99 queries for a particular scale factor, and your target is add indexes for improving 10%, as, and these indexes should be the smallest as possible. So this is a very pragmatic way to the indexing problem. A second uh, uh, way to study this course, then you put uh, uh, you put uh, materialized views, and then you think how many of these materialized views I can reuse in as many uh, in as many uh, queries as possible. And then the third uh, idea would be how with uh, different probabilities. You say this query is very probable, and this not is very probable. How all this fix, fits into your indexing and materialized views uh, strategies. So you have very concrete terms, and that the, 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 the nice uh, exercise for you to study is this is what typ typically people do in normal data warehouses. They have these, find the 99 queries on a similar sizes or a similar types, and then you have, I need to maximize 10% or increase my overall 10% or 20% or I, I have a, this amount of space. So I put uh, materialized views or indices, one or two or combination of the two. So this is, a, and there is no, no single solution. The, the only possibility would be to have uh, two different student projects or groups and then you say, I want to compare, increase 10%. And then you are free to mix uh, and match materialized views, uh, indices or whatever. For each of those, you compute the mega, mega, uh, number of additional megabytes of, uh, of information. And then a competition would be how, how could some group uh, achieve the best performance with the less cost? 
And that's the kind of thing that you will need to do in real life. And you start with, with zero, with zero optimization. No index, no materialized views, and then you need to optimize. Okay, for this, uh, this idea, a practical way to exercise yourself into this domain. Um, now I need to give you a little bit of material for tackling the third exercise. Is there any question before switching to the next exercise for the, until now? So let's go for the computation of aggregations. For that I need to do this, I need to connect, if I find the connector here, and uh, I insist something that uh, now that you understand a little bit more in deeper details, that even if uh, many of these physical optimizations are even are automatically uh, managed by the by a database system like SQL Server or something, in many cases you have two 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 cases two problems. Let me go as first look for the slides and then I will come back to you. Uh, no, I need another Site Explorer here. Uh, aggregate computation. So, uh, so the idea is that all this technical part that we have been uh, you, uh, that we have been seeing uh, physical optimization of data warehouses is essential both. In even if we are using SQL Server, SQL Server has a lot of intelligence behind that and propose you automatically things. But on the other extreme, for example, if you are working with real big data environments, Kailin is a typical example of that, Ap Apache Kailin. It's a data warehouse on top of Hadoop, uh, MapReduce, and all this uh, stack of big data architectures then you need to do all these physical inter implementations or physical analysis yourself. You don't have any clue. Uh, I mean, uh, all this, it's like programming everything by from scratch. You need to define your, your materialized view. You need to define and then compute it yourself and do the optimization yourself. You don't have a query optimizer that takes takes into account uh, that you have already defined your uh, your materialized views and there will be an automatic query writing. No, you need to do your query writing yourself, given the that you decide to materialize something. So the idea is that sooner or later you really need to get into these technical details because of the size of the data. So this part uh, of the, the the chapter of the this chapter of the uh, lecture is very important because sooner continuously you will be doing this optimization. So this is another kind of, of optimization that you need to be aware of is the how do we compute aggregations? Uh, as we have no, we have materialized views. And uh, these materialized views could help you to do uh, compute part of the data queue. Then we need to see how to compute all, uh, how to compute uh, this, the, 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 this typical case of uh, aggregation. Select, uh, you have three dimensions, uh, one attribute, which is a measure, and then you group uh, all these, how do we, uh, compute uh, efficiently these kinds of aggregation. Of course, we, we have uh, terabytes of information here, and the problem is to do this aggregation efficiently. One, one, pro, one potential uh, way to compute this is to sort. We have already seen that. We sort, uh, and then we scan. When this is, uh, then uh, you can do uh, in a sequential way. You start with the first combination of parameters, 
ABC with 156. And then since all, all, all of them are sorted in order first A, then B, then C, then uh, the next value can be the same and then you just simply add them. But then you need to keep, have a, vari a variable in memory to say these are my, my last values. As soon as the reading the next record, you have a different value, you close the previous uh, subtotal and then you start a new one. And then uh, here a new one, so start a new one, another one, and then uh, again you have, uh, you, you, do, you, you get the idea. So this is a traditional way to do aggregation, uh, sort based, so the cost, uh, the cost will be n log n, which is the typical cost for sorting. And as you, as you say, n log n is not complex. Compute n log n for million or 10 million or 100 million, and then you immediately understand your calculator will not have enough, enough uh, figures for, for doing n log n for very big, uh, very big sizes. So nevertheless, this is still expensive. Uh, the problem, what is the problem? Is it typically if we have, uh, no, the, uh, one observation first, uh, we have ABC and then at the same time we can compute the three aggregation on AB a, and A. How can we do that? So, so uh, we are trying to, with a single pass, do a aggregation of A, B, C on A, B, on A. You can do the same thing before, but for the three of them at the same time. So we have something like this. Uh, I don't have an example, but instead of keeping only one parameter, you have an, another table A, B, and another table A, C, and then in a single pass, you get the idea or not? Uh, no. uh, let me try at the same time that you have here uh, you have another table with a b and the count so you have one five at the same time let's start this is the beginning uh, it's order so you have uh, you have this and then you compute the abc that is there uh, you have another table with A, B, and then you have another table with only A. And then you put one here, and then you do the aggregation in, in the same pass. So one, five, six, and then you have eight, you put eight, eight here and eight here. Then you continue one, and then you put uh, 14 here, also, uh, but uh, yeah, then uh, 14 here, and then you do in parallel the three at the same time, okay? Uh, so this is one. What happened if you say how to do, you remember group by roll up and group by cube that we can put here in the, in the SQL query. This is the easiest case, but you can do group by and then roll up A, B, C, or you can do cube A, B, uh, A, B, C. You remember the difference here or not? What is the main difference? Uh, yes? All, all, the two have total. The, so the main overall total, both, both have it. What is the difference between the two? You have all the combinations. Yes, Q has all the combinations, and uh, roll up has only A, B, C, A, B. Uh, look, look where we are here. In a single pass, we are doing the cube. Sorry, the roll up. What happened if we use we ask cube? So we have a first combination A B C. Uh, we, sorting A B C, we have uh, A B C, A B and A, but we are missing the other combinations for the cube. You get the idea? 
Then this is why this pipe sort algorithm enters. Suppose that you are need to compute a cube ABC. The roll up is easy to do because you started by a, B, uh, by sorting by A, B, C. What, what are the combinations that are missing? R, B, C, uh, A, C, uh, A, B, uh, A, C, B, C, and then B and C. So the pipe sort algorithm does this, reduce a resort for taking again the other the other combination, so basically from A, B, C, you compute uh, A, B, and A in a single pass. Then you need to resort, if you want to do all possible combinations, you sort in another way, B, C, D, A, and then you can compute all the other combinations, all these subsets. So when you do group uh, cube A, B, C, you, you need to obtain two, to the power of three combinations. You are not computing eight, uh, eight, co eight uh, computation at the same time. You need to minimize how many sorts you use for, uh, for these three parameters and then computing as many, uh, as a uh, as low number of uh, single passes of the same, uh, you need to sort as and reduce the number of sorts, and with each sort, you compute a partial uh, sum of a part, a part of the lattice. You get the idea? So let's compute this lattice. We have A, B, C here. We have uh, A, B, A, C. So this is the one A, B, A, C, and B, C. We have A. We have B and B, and then we have nothing here. So by sorting on A, B, C, we compute uh, this and uh, even this. So these are already computed with a single sort. Now we need to do an efficient way to combine the, to obtain these four other values. How do we do? Maybe we sort on A, C, but the dash will not solve us to, so we can do four sorts and do it again. But maybe we could, we could do smarter, do the, the work on BC and then obtain already these two with a single pass. So this is the idea of the pipe sort algorithm. When uh, you sort, then you can compute another subset of the, of the, the, the lattice and then uh, of the la sooner or later you have a small one that you need to nevertheless sort at the end and do the final missing elements of your lattice that are uh, that you need yes so in this case would we choose to sort to c a instead of a c is that a possibility for the pipe sort or you have all possibilities but you need to compute the, the less cost how do you compute the one that le has less cost so in this case, we already sorted this, and then we computed all this in a single pass. We need to compute these four missing. How how do I know which I, from which from which I start? Basically, you get the idea. You start from this or from this. Uh, if you do start from this, you can derive here. If you start from this, you can derive here. And then you know, you need the missing one, another one for the missing one. How do we choose between start between this and this? Can we, for example, use the same principle as we use with materialized views when we have the benefits and stuff. Something like this. You need to. Uh, how many elements do we have here in BC? And then how many rows we have in AC? And then out of that, you can compute uh, the one that is cheapest. So this is the kind of thing that uh, whatever uh, SQL uh, optimizer needs to compute this, then he has probably some implementation of this pipe sort algorithm to understand uh, which will be faster to compute. 
But again, if you are not working on SQL Server or PostgreSQL, you need to do that by hand. Because no, many the tools do not have this, uh, many data warehouse tools will not uh, allow you this, and then you need to do this by hand. Okay? So this is the, uh, another kind of optimization that uh, it is hash based. Uh, that allows you to do not sort. Sort is complex, and again, it's complex for big for big n. So suppose that you have uh, you can use hash. You can use a hash function. You, uh, does anyone know specifically what is a hash function? It's a one-way mapping. Like you put a integer or a string inside a function, and it maps to a random number. And so that gives you an address where to put that. You lost Charlotte in that explanation. Sorry. For that. <laughs> <laughs> so can someone explain that in very simple terms? Well, very simple. It's just a black box. So you have a black box. You put some input there, and it outputs something totally different, something encoded, and you cannot know because it's a black box inside. So it has. But in, inside the background, there is some algorithms, which works. There are different algorithms for hashing. Yes. But also, I would also explain to Charlotte the word hashing. So, for example, you have a long string of uh, characters. You can cut and place uh, um, some parts of the word, uh, other parts, and like, put some extra things in it to, to modify it. But still modifying it the same way all the objects that come, uh, so that we can recognize uh, an input by reading its output when we know how the thing is uh, modified, mm -hmm. but uh, to the outside world, uh, the procedure is completely uh, it's a black box. Perfect. I like this idea of black box, so I will explain myself. Each of us has his own way to pedagogically explain this concept. So I would explain it is a mathematical function, complex, it can be arbitrarily complex, that gives one or many parameters and at the end uh, produce one parameter the idea is this parameter can uh, I, I can use this parameter to put my combination of values in that in that box in that bucket and then i can uh, immediately divide my po all possible combination of me, my input into one one drawer and out of in, in this drawer then I can I can I can get my I can immediately get my initial elements uh, I know that the I all if I'm looking at one five and six that will be in that particular drawer and I don't I don't uh, the idea is that all possible output of uh, my my goal would be that the content of all the drawers will be more or less balanced. This is what a nice uh, hash function does, that more or less distributes evenly all the input values uh, into a number of output, uh, out, output drawers. Not convinced with my explanation. No, Charlotte doesn't know why do I care about hashes? Why are we even using them? Charlotte still like she's kind of curious about the black box. She doesn't want to get too into it, but she's totally lost as to why we're doing any of these hashes. Why? Why is it? It's complicated and convoluted. Yes, I, you are fully right. So let's let's help. Uh, uh, let's. I help. think Charlotte would think that. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so can yes. So with hashing, you just get a random address that gave to put this thing. Like in, with computers, you can think if you want to insert into an array. Every time the array is getting filled, it will linearly take. Sorry, you lost so your <laughs> You can't use the word array. Um, and address also is like, are we going to someone's house? What are like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, then, maybe him. <laughs> I mean, you can get the element directly open, like that. It, you don't need to do this. Elements. Can't search. use the word elements. <laughs> okay. So suppose you have a problem of storing uh, data and retrieving. So okay. if you need to search every bucket, huh. that which bucket is empty and in which I can put the data. And once I'm back, okay, this is my token. Please give me back my data. Huh. Then you need to search all of the buckets and match the token. Okay. What what hashing function does is 
that it will read the token and tell you the exact bucket number. For computer, it is very convenient to read the token. If I give it an address of bucket, computer can quickly fetch that bucket. Okay. So the idea is here we have many possible combinations of all the values of A and I, I give you the, 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 the word uh, address. You have many possible combinations of A, B, C. And I have a fixed number of uh, drawers in which I could I need to uh, split all these values into a fixed number of uh, of drawers, and I would like to more or less evenly put as many uh, as many values in the in the in the drawers. So this is my hash function to traduce a very large space in a in a small number of drawers in which I can find this information. Uh, Andres. <laughs> so you get the idea. Hash function help us to do. Um, you, you can imagine how many values of client, how many values of uh, products, how many values, all the combinations. This is the problem of sparse versus uh, dense matrix. In in a data cube, we have a sparse matrix, so we cannot. Uh, uh, there will be an exponentially number of uh, drawers in which uh, many of drawers will be empty. I don't want to reserve space for all these empty drawers. I want to somehow have a fixed number of drawers in which I put uh, all the elements. So I need a mapping. Uh, the, the word mapping appeared here. The word mapping uh, helps us to have a combination of 156. I know that I, ha I can look into that drawer. So where we were talking about like select functions and, and all this stuff, now we're getting into how do we optimize all of this at the memory basis to do even better than just using like a bitmap index. Now we're, we're looking at can we keep all of the rows in the same page in memory so that when I go there, I'm only drawing one page or, or I know exactly which pages to draw. Uh, allow me to give an, a similar example, uh, partitioning. We, yeah, we saw yesterday that uh, partitioning means, suppose that you have your fact table, this is the fact table, and you have millions of uh, rows like this in your fact table, and you want to partition in, I don't know, you have uh, in your cluster eight machines. So you, you, you need to map this amount of possible combinations into eight drawers. So what is how to map uh, an input to one of the eight? One, the traditional way that people do cite to that you will have Marcos Lot this, this Friday. This is how uh, partition is done, a hash function that computes, uh, give, you give a lot of values here and then give you a number of defined buckets. And then in this case, you can say, I can obtain this to this cluster, to this, uh, to this node in my cluster, etc. So it's another way. Uh, it's uh, just a black box is a very nice idea, and as well, it's something that transforms a very large multidimensional space into a fixed number of buckets. And these buckets can be arbitrarily uh, used for many things, for memory things, for hash-based uh, uh, aggregation, for splitting data into into cluster, etc. So the idea here is we don't need to sort and then we take uh, 156 give us into this bucket because we have a function that transform uh, immediately and then when we apply 214 we have another bucket and if by chance we have uh, 156 we enter into, into the same bucket that we have previously had. But for this, uh, this Typically, only matches if uh, there are even hash based joints. Hash, what would be hash based joints if only for the name? What is a hash, ba a hash join in traditional databases? You know what is join? You have many algorithms to implement join, like nested loops, etc. One of them is hash join.
Typically, instead of the keeping the uh, same cli client here and same uh, client here in the two tables, you, you apply to the hash function the same to both, and then th there are ways in which this can be better, much, much better, uh, much, much more efficient than traditional joins, because they don't need sorting. Basically, the hashing avoids the sorting issue, and sorting is always expensive. Get the idea? So, and that, that, that was the example I was trying to show A, B, C, A, C, and C that you, you asked at the, at the beginning. So, I don't know, maybe either you want to have a, a, a break or either, yes, maybe you can have a break before going to the, to the fourth, uh, fourth and five exercise, which is computing the actual uh, cost uh, and optimizing this cost of a cube. Okay, break. Break.